So if you're like me and you like to go on walks during the winter because the heat is not abysmal where you are at, i.e. you don't live in California during the summer, fortunate, you like to listen to podcasts. And if you listen to podcasts, you might want to take notes on those. And those notes, you really want to get those into Obsidian. And if you've watched this channel, you know that I've had ways of doing that, particularly this awesome application called Air. Now, Air is pretty cool. Now let's go check out their Twitter. Ah, yeah. So if you didn't know recently until I just found out because what's going on with the app? Why isn't stuff not working? Um, I'm guessing Air just died because it doesn't work anymore. It's gone. You can't find it in the app store. There was barely an email that was sent out. So all of a sudden, pff, there goes all your stuff. So what this means is that all of those air quotes where you have like the hosted like clips, the audio clips with uh, also the exported transcripts and your notes and everything for um, all of your stuff in the air app, everyone who had all their stuff there gone. And they may have sent out an email like warning you about it. I don't remember getting one. So ultimately everyone just got shafted in a way. Now, the good news is because I already had all this stuff in Readwise and I hadn't uh, done another Readwise sync because like Readwise grabbed the data, put it into Obsidian for me as it does. If I had deleted those files and re-synced it to try and get all of the content again, like a most recent update, I would have lost everything. But what I did manage to do was copy all of the exported podcast note files that I have and they were already in Obsidian and I managed to move them all to a folder so that Readwise doesn't control them anymore so that I could keep all of the exported content. So does this really like impact me badly? In a way, yeah. Uh, in one hand, like it might be like this where it's like air quote and it doesn't give me any transcript because some of the podcasts didn't have transcripts. I just have the notes. So in a way I have to do even more work now to recover all of these prior done notes. Uh, to make sure I can grab relevant context when I actually process these because I've been horrible about actually processing these timely. So this is actually going to be a large amount of work for me to do. Now, the good news is that because of how this worked is that I do have timestamps for the particular episodes. So it's not a total loss. It's just a lot of extra work, especially because I don't have the transcripts to easily just jump into the context of what I actually snipped and uh, write the notes. But now with the death of air, how do we take notes on podcasts? Want to get the latest releases of my Obsidian template vault and all of the work that I do in Obsidian, including the latest updates to my custom theme and CSS, supporting me on GitHub sponsors at any recurring tier for any of those amounts? We'll get you private access to the GitHub repository where all of my updates, everything from my template vault is updated in near real time with constant updates, tag releases, and helpful documentation, tutorials, and other content specifically for sponsors only. Want to report issues that you find and have them resolved swiftly? Or just talk and have discussions about what you may have found or what you might have questions about in the template vault and get priori prioritized responses from me? And becoming a sponsor of my template repository will get you all of this and more. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. So I may not know this for sure. It's a guess, but I'm guessing that the income model of the air app was not sound because i never paid anything for air it was a free application so maybe a lot of why they shut down was just the fact that there wasn't enough cash flow to keep them going as a company to keep offering the service who knows ultimately all i know is that i need a new solution because it's about winter time and i want to take notes on podcasts and now the thing i was using is gone how do i replace that well in comes the potential new solution, and that would be Snipped. Now, Snipped, as you're seeing here, is available, and I believe it's available on all platforms, um, Android, iOS, etc. Now, there is some things to know about Snipped, though, is that unlike Air, which is gone now, um, having the transcriptions from the uh, podcast episodes that you're taking notes on, like all that is not i don't think it's free anymore like it's it's gonna be a paid feature i mean you can listen you can take notes on the podcasts and it will still export information to readwise and it will still work through the full workflow uh, pretty much the same as air but one of the things i really liked was getting those transcriptions having everything in solid text 
not necessarily linked references to hosted audio clip snippets like how Air was doing, but I wanted the raw text. So I always had it in perpetuity. I didn't need to go hunt down any media, all of that. So looking back at Snipped, what I've done is I've, you know, it synced it to my Apple podcast because that's just the default thing. And now I've gotten my uh, list of podcasts imported here. You know, there's some stuff. Cool. I went through the episodes and I built out my queue. I got like, you can see like 102 things there in my queue right now that I want to listen to. Um, and yeah, I got some stuff to go through. Now you can, can use Snipped for free and listen to podcasts, take notes, sync that to Readwise, and it will send you like little timestamped notes uh, to those various you know segments where you did that. But if you pay for premium, which pricing wise, eh, you might you might not want to. But if you pay for premium, it's one of these new services now where they have a bunch of new AI features. So you get uh, like AI transcriptions, show notes, summaries. Now I'm not the type of person who likes to just review like these quick things and call it done on the podcasts. Part of me is just also I want to listen to it because there might be context that's missed. So I would still listen to it, albeit on like two to two and a half times speed. But these things exist. So using this as like a reference point to further accentuate your notes that you're taking based on what you yourself decided to take notes on, this is actually a pretty valuable thing if again, you decide to pay for it. But what you can do is when you actually export uh, these snippets uh, that you might take, just like how you took snippets on the Air podcasts, you can actually export not only your snippets, your notes, all the things, but the transcripts, the AI full summaries, key highlights, content, plus your actual notes, all of it gets exported into you know, the output format, which can be several different formats. So if we actually sync something, export and sync, you can sync to Readwise, Notion for those Notion people, directly to Obsidian, which I do not like. I don't, I'm not sure how that's supposed to work, but I just put everything through Read, Readwise. I prefer that. It just works well for me. But surprising, they also have an export to LogSec. Those of people who still use Bear, there's that. And you can export directly to Markdown files. So really, there's a lot of options to facilitate the capture and retention of your information, your notes, your content, your insights, everything to plain text. So a strategy that I'm thinking about using with Snipped is that I'm going to be using it, obviously, but I'll be using it for a few months. I don't tend to listen to podcasts very much, very actively, except when I'm actually walking. I really like listening to podcasts when I walk, and I tend to do most of my walking like sometimes it can get up to 10 miles a day in the winter time. So it's just now starting to get into the season where I actually would listen to podcasts. So what I will want to do is maybe pay month to month. Yes, it's a little bit more money, but you could pay like, I think it's like $5.99, $6.99, something like that, um, which is the monthly rate, but it's billed annually. So you pay like $70, you get the app for an entire year. But if you don't use it the entire year, maybe that doesn't work for you. So maybe paying $10 a month for like four months might be the best option for you. And that's probably what I'm going to be looking at is using all of the fancy features when I listen to podcasts for the, the few months that I do really go heavy on podcasts and then ending my subscription temporarily until the next winter. These are all options that you have. And that's kind of where I'm, where I'm at on the idea of this. This is future editing, Brian. I actually got into contact with the co-founder of Snipped and managed to work out something. So if you use my link, either here, comment, description, wherever, you'll find them. Uh, if you use that to sign up for the annual subscription to Snipped, if you're interested in doing so, you will also get a one month trial period instead of the normal, I think it's seven day trial period for the application for free. So you can try everything that I'm talking about for a month completely for free uh, and decide if it is for you or not. And this is something I'm working out with them. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to last forever, so definitely take advantage of it while it's still here. And you're going to have to use the link either here or wherever. So have fun. <laughs> so now lessons learned from this whole debacle with air. Number one is that keep track of your podcasts and your subscriptions 
in an app that's not going away. For me, that's Apple Podcasts. But the problem is that in Air, I actually subscribed to particular podcasts, but only in the Air app. So now that Air being gone, I actually don't even remember what all my podcast subscriptions were. So, eh, keep track of them in an app that's not going away and use that app as the source of truth. For me, it's Apple Podcasts. So what you can also do is keep track of your queue in um, the application or you know, even the, the accessory application, Snipped in this case. But ultimately, that source of truth is going to be the biggest like key to keeping track of what you actually wanted to listen to and haven't or have at this point. So get your source of truth application set up and know what you're actually following. Uh, the next thing is get the podcast exports. And what I mean is like when you exported from air and you got the, the clips to the air quotes and it's the, the audio clips, instead of getting transcribed text, get the transcriptions, get the text of the snippet of audio that you listen to. There's plenty of tools for this now. There's a variety of options to actually convert audio clips to transcribed text. There's a lot of AI tooling around that now, various options. And that is something that's going to be a big deal is get that contact context out there, get the content, and then you don't need to go and hunt down the podcast, listen to the, the, the particular clips like I now have to for my old air exports. And it's just that future, uh, that resilience and that future proofing of your note content. Where did I get this note from? It's from this podcast. Here's the context of the actual audio clip in text of where I got this note from. Get your exported content and transcriptions of the audio clips for your notes in podcasts. It's just so much better, more beneficial for future proofing and for your future self. And then finally is just a, a warning to not be like me, which is don't sit on your podcast notes forever uh, because I've been really bad about be, keep being on top of my inputs because I've just been so busy. Um, and then your relied upon application just dies. Air, gone. So don't end up in my situation. Be a little bit more on top of your notes. Uh, but then finally is another lesson, which is um, sometimes it is good to pay for an application because one thing that this tells you is that that application has cash flow, which means they're less likely to just disappear on you in the foreseeable future. So sometimes it is worth it and worthwhile to pay for an application because you secure the likelihood that they're not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So balance these factors. Maybe you want to pay for it. Maybe not. Maybe you only want to pay for it for a certain amount of time like I do. Maybe not. But this is what I'm currently using. Snipped and so far pretty happy with the experience. Air had a lot of bugs sometimes, especially when you're trying to like get certain markers for your snips. Uh, your air quotes, uh, it, it did have a lot of problems sometimes. Snip thus far has been a very smooth experience. I'm actually very happy with it. And the AI features for the keynotes and the summaries are going to be very beneficial to me. I really like having like a starting point when I look at an, a podcast and saying, okay, here's the highlights and what I can expect to see in here. Now, how can I relate this information that I'm going to listen to, to these points? And then how can I take notes on this now fleshed out context that I built with reviewing and actually listening to the podcast. So try this out, see if you like it. But this is the solution I found um, instead of air because I tried Memento, I tried looking at other things. There's just not really anything really great on the market right now for doing transcription and plain text notes on podcasts exportable to something like Readwise. This is where it's at. And so once you actually have your notes in the application and you sync it to Readwise, it sends the information to you know your podcast area. And then I've gone over, I think, before um, the Obsidian export for Connect and Sync exporting your notes to Obsidian. I have like all of this uh, Jinja templates stuff to process into my Readwise folders when I actually sync all my content so that once it actually hits into here, podcasts, and it will actually input all this information, all this data into the uh, actual Obsidian vault. It's all based on Readwise and some uh, information in those templates. So that's what I'm working with now. And 
maybe you have some other ideas. There is an Obsidian plugin. Um, I think it's like Pod Notes. I haven't looked into that yet. That might be a good option, but at the same time, when I'm walking, I want to be away from my phone, and I might not have that. It might not work fully for me that plugin. But hey, it's worth looking into. And these are the options that are available. So, hope you found this interesting. Catch you in the next one. Well, aren't you glad I'm the type to hyperfixate? Because I ended up looking at the plugin, anyways, and got it set up. And I gotta say, it's it's not bad. Like, there's it, it doesn't do the transcription. It doesn't give you uh, a lot of the details and stuff that Snipped would do, so I'm still probably going to use Snipped. I really want that, like, really nice workflow. But I'm going to go over Pod Notes because it might actually work for you and what you want to have set up. So let's dive in. So starting off, let's just get our list of podcast data. You just want to know what that list is. Awesome. Let's get it. In searching Reddit, I found uh, something... Uh, where we can get this because apparently after Mac OS Catalina, if you're still using Mac for things, it, otherwise just grab the OPML file for your podcasts. But for Mac, you have to go to this particular file path, library, containers, podcasts, and it didn't end up being podcasts for me. It was um, actually com.apple.podcasts, but uh, from there it's data, documents, and then you're going to be looking at the podcastsdb.plist file. So you can open up that directory, grab a copy of that um, plist file. Then I'll put a link to this in the video description or something. But here you can upload that particular file, podcastdb.plist, and then download an OPML file. This is just an easy interoperable format, so of course Apple decides that we shouldn't give that to you. Uh, and that format is what you can easily import into other things to connect and make sure that you get your list of podcasts and subscriptions and stuff. So then we can actually you know, deal with the pod, no pod notes documentation and it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward to set up. So inside of Obsidian, I have the pod notes plugin installed and all I've done at the bottom, um, I changed the default timestamp format. Instead of it being dash time and whatever the default, uh, if you change it to link time, then it actually creates a linked timestamp note uh, line item that will work with the podcast player. And I removed the bullet point specifically for a reason, which I'll cover in a second. But um, where do you want the notes to be made? You can use the same kind of template variables here, and then you can add your actual podcast template here. One thing I don't like is that it doesn't just say, hey, pick a template or template, but you know that may be a free feature request we could just request from there. But uh, this is something something that might work for you. Uh, episode download path. If you wanted to actually download an offline copy of the podcast episodes, where do you want those to be? And then finally, import. And now this is where you would actually import that OPML file. Now, I had some issues picking a file path on my system, so I literally just put this file in the vault at the root of the vault, apple.opml, import it, and now I have my list of podcasts. So... Inside of the plugins interface, there is a now a podcast show grid. So here's the grid of my podcasts. And you can see I have some things on my queue, which here is my uh, episode queue list. I'm listening to this one right now. And then I have two down here that I have queued up. So on the actual grid, you can go to your different shows and then do do do. Right click on them and you can say either play, mark is played, download the offline copy, create a note for that particular podcast, add the podcast that episode to favorites, or add that episode to the queue. That way we can actually start working on the episode. So if I mark it as played, I wonder, does it disappear? Mark is played. It does not. Okay, interesting. So either way, I do have some episodes queued up and I was, at, in fact, listening to one. So if I go back to here and I start listening to a particular podcast... Stop. Thank you. So if I'm playing the podcast, you can see it has a time 1326. Now there is a command that you can actually set up so that it will insert your podcast notes and you can link this to a hotkey just like the um, same with the video timestamp 
plugin. There might even be a way of doing a commander uh, command so that you can change based on the special symbol in the beginning of the file name, which determines whether it's a video note or a podcast note according to my workflow and maybe have it use the same hotkey, but for, I, I don't know, I don't know, figure, we'll figure something out. So I can just run the command, which is capture timestamp with pod notes. And because I used link time instead of time, it adds a link to that particular time. Now this one says 235. Currently the player is at 1326. I always forget to zoom in. So hopefully that's better. Now if I click 235 here and click that link, it actually changes the podcast player's time to 235. And from there, I can just add normal textual notes and there you go. And there's also the metadata of the podcast episode description that can import based on creating the new note. So I can just create this note should I want to do that. Uh, it might take a second here, but let's delete this and then start over from scratch. The note has been deleted. There is currently nothing inside the inbox for that particular podcast. Do, do, do. It should say like normal is, and it does not, there's nothing here. So going to the podcast, and I'm going to right click on the podcast episode or the player here and say, instead of download, that's an offline copy, don't want that, don't want favorites, don't, it's already on the queue, create note. So now it's going to create the note from the template that's listed in the plugin settings. Uh, this does in fact grab the cover image. Uh, yep, okay, so it does in fact grab the cover image download, which is awesome, here's the description. And now we are ready to actually listen to this and take notes, so if I add you know, add a timestamp note. There it is, 235, text content, or test content. There you go, bam. Now, ultimately, especially for my use case, how well does this work with the Obsidian mobile application? Normally, I don't use Obsidian mobile at all. So how well does this work? Now, what I've done is I've actually moved over to Obsidian uh, Mobile, and I have this file, this particular file, open in the mobile application. So let's look at just the mobile view now. So now, in the mobile view, as we can see, here is the, the actual note. And if I actually go to the, uh, it's on the other side, pod notes, you can see that it is open. It's at, the player is at 529, so I'm playing this podcast on my Obsidian uh, application on the mobile, and I could be playing it, and I just have it paused, so I don't wanna listen to it at the moment, but now, inside the note, as I'm listening, enter, and now, what do I do? Now, what I've done is, on the far left, or just above the keyboard, I actually configured which actions I wanted on that bar, and there are a couple that you could put there. You could probably use Commander to get the others like skipping forward and backward or whatever. But by clicking on that, or by tapping on that uh, little clock one, it does the command of insert timestamp. So now I can add, I have to add a new note on the podcast and then enter and whatever. And then if you have uh, Obsidian Sync, which right now I don't have it running because I'm having some issues with it, at the moment that I need to work out, but if you had it doing it using Obsidian Sync, this would sync back to your vault on your desktop and you would have notes linked to timestamps in the actual podcast episode. And if you've downloaded an offline copy, then you would have an offline copy to refer back to in perpetuity. Uh, you could store those anywhere you want to or whatever. And then also this uh, particular plugin will work with local files, not just podcasts. So you could do this with local files as well. Essentially, you could also do it with the videos, but like uh, pick the right tool for the right job. But what I ultimately I'm getting at is that this could potentially work for you. The only downside to doing things this way, rather than um, uh, using like something like Snipped, is that one, you don't get all of those AI features which you might find worthwhile. The summaries, the updates, the overviews, all that stuff, you might want that. Um, and then two, you don't get instant transcription of a particular block of content right before your note for that context. And that's really something that I wanted, but this is a really awesome approach that might work for you and your podcast listening habits. So, Totally, totally interesting options, both of which could be free. Snip does have all the super awesome features, syncing with Readwise, 
But if you don't wanna pay for Readwise, you don't wanna pay for Snipped, then this is a perfectly adequate and free way of accessing podcast note-taking functionality for free. But you will also likely need Obsidian Sync to get it back to your vault, maybe. So ultimately there's probably gonna be some cost involved either way, but there's options. So hope you enjoyed this video, hope it helps. Have fun with podcasting. Catch you in the next one.